What's up? What's up? It's going down. We in the building. Mike Powers. I thought I started off with a little bit of music today. Let me go to this little program. Turn this down real quick. Old school. You feel me? We just get this turned down real quick. All right, we just turn that off. Let's do that right quick. That's the SOS band. Just be good to me. You already know what that is. If you don't know, go look that up. I'll probably link it down in the comments. Uh, first and foremost, we're getting into some a little bit different topic today than what we normally have been doing. We've been on that hip hop. Told y'all I'd do more than that. Uh, right at the bottom of the screen, you see the headline right there. Uh, Whitney Houston's ex lover spills the tea. Uh, this just dropped a couple days ago, this story. Uh, so let's just, first of all, we talk about Robin Crawford. And I want to try to get into this as much as I possibly can. It's a little bit of controversy surrounding the fact that this person decided to write a tell-all. So uh, let's get into it. First of all, greatest female voice of all time. I brought notes today. Got notes all over the place. Um, so we're going to freewheel it, do it like we do. First of all, before we get started. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank all the people that's been tuning into the videos I've been putting out. I thank you for the support. Um, got a lot of traction on that uh, West Side Gun, Conway, Cal. Incredible. I like doing stuff like that. So, of course, you're going to see more music coming up. Let me not bump this table too much because it's not as sturdy as I would like it to be. So, um, also, this little thing right here. It's the Mike uh, P. Popper thing here. And, you know, people tell me, don't talk about your technical difference. I don't give a fuck. This is, well, I hope this don't distract you. If you do, let me know in the comment section. We'll get to that. Uh, but thanks for watching the videos. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Subscribe to this channel because it really does help. I've been loving the comments and the feedback, growing this community together. Now let's get some subs in here. We can make this thing real legit now. On to the story of the day. Greatest female voice of all time. That's that's where Whitney Houston is on my list. Um, you know, when Aretha Franklin passed not too long ago. Um, I don't remember exactly when, maybe a year ago or something like that. Uh, I was devastated, obviously, as any real music fan would have been. And so this song... Um, What's the name of this song? Ain't No Way. I don't know how I can forget it. Ain't No Way. Heard that song from Aretha. I was like, damn. Okay. Then I'm on YouTube. You know, different people do different covers of, of the songs. I came across Whitney doing Ain't No Way. I'm going to link it in the comment section below. Listen to her live version of Ain't No Way. I'm not going to describe it to you tell you what you in for if you have not seen it you owe it to yourself as a music lover somebody with some decent working ears to go check out that performance so i say greatest female voice of all time flat out i saw a list where somebody had her at number three somebody they must have been smoking a, a strain that i never heard of to put whitney houston at number three people right now what is he talking about Name two then, name two voices better than Whitney Houston. Now, when you look at this video, like I said, I wasn't going to describe this to you. I'm going to describe it to you a little bit. This video of Whitney Houston singing Ain't No Way. The thing she does on this song, the range, the ranges that she goes through, the type of notes she hits without even trying on this on this is a live performance not even trying killing the game and telling the story with her emotions with this song it's not just the voice it's how she interprets the song uh also you can go look at the video for uh didn't we almost have it all where she's wearing a bomber jacket uh i don't know how live that is uh it looks like a live performance but of course it was a a music video so they probably mess with the sound and whatnot on there but that song didn't we almost have it all and then her performance of it still the greatest national anthem shout out to kaepernick still the greatest 
version of the Star Spangled Banner in the history of the song. Uh, Marvin Gaye is way up there. If you haven't seen either one of those, go check them out. Uh, Marvin Gaye almost caused a damn race war in this country with his version. Um, it it sounds like sexual healing, but it's the Star Spangled Banner. That's Marvin Gaye's version. <laughs> But Whitney's version is incredible. Even if you don't like the Star Spangled Banner, even if that's not your jam, you will like that song when you hear Whitney singing. I say greatest female voice of all time. Um, so I got highlights over here, Whitney Houston. We just gonna do this regular. It's not really, I had to bring this to you. So I'm not doing edits and all that right now. We'll work on that later. Um, Whitney Houston, born August 9th, 1963. She was cited as the most awarded female artist of all time by Guinness Book of World Records. She remains the best-selling music artist, or oh, one of the best-selling music artists of all time. This is from uh, Wikipedia. So if you trust Wikipedia, whatever. But if you dispute these facts, give me the evidence. Um, 200 million records sold worldwide. 200 million records sold worldwide. She released seven studio albums. I would have thought that she released more. I'm guessing they probably not counting the soundtracks. I don't know. Um, she released seven studio albums and two soundtrack albums. Okay, there you go. All of which have been certified diamond. That's 10 million sold, each one of them. Diamond. That's, some, that's worldwide. Um, that's somebody that's having a tremendous impact on the music industry and people worldwide. 200 million albums album so um diamond so okay she signed when she was 19 years old her first two studio albums whitney houston and whitney uh, 1985 1987 respectively both reached number one on the billboard 200 in the u.s and to date are the biggest selling first two albums released of any artist in history. To this day, she is the only artist to have seven consecutive number one singles on the US Billboard Hot 100 chart from Saving All My Love For You in 85 to Where Do Broken Hearts Go in 88. Seven consecutive number one singles. Uh, she made her screen acting debut in the romantic thriller, The Bodyguard. Uh, we all remember that movie. Uh, she recorded six songs for the film soundtrack, including the monster hit, I Will Always Love You, a song that was previously recorded by Dolly Parton and got that motherfucker stolen forthwith. Um, she won a Grammy for record of the year for that song and became, it became the best-selling single by a woman in music history. Told you she, she stole Dolly Parton's song, snatched it. It's hers now. The soundtrack album received the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. It remains the all-time best-selling album by a female artist. I said it was the greatest of all time. And I don't even trip on sales. Because a lot of people want to talk about they're the greatest because sales. We talk about this in rap all the time. What I always say to cats when they tell me, oh, this dude is better than that dude. Because this dude got so much money. This dude sold so many records. Vanilla Ice had the number one single in the country at one point. Case closed. But... In this case, I think these numbers are right in line with the level of talent that Whitney Houston brought to the table. All right, I, I lost my spot reading here. Um, Waiting to Exhale. She had a soundtrack for that. Preacher's Wife. Uh, went on to become best-selling gospel album in history. Um, her mother. Let's talk about the lineage. Sissy Houston, an incredible singer. Um first cousin of Dion Warwick legend her godmother was Darlene Love and her honorary aunt was Aretha Franklin at age 15 Houston sang background vocals for Shaka Khan and Lou Rawls at 15 some of y'all may not know who Lou Rawls is I've been looking at my analytics so uh on the background of my YouTube I check out analytics every once in a while and I noticed that my demographics should know, people that's watching me should know who Shaka Khan and Lou Rawls is. Whitney sang back up for them at age 15. You gotta be a bad, you gotta be bad to be singing back up for Shaka Khan. All right. She appeared in 17 magazine, Whitney did, 
and became one of the first women of color to grace the cover of the magazine. She was also featured in layouts and pages of Glamour, Cosmopolitan, and Young Miss Whitney Houston. Every accolade that was ever bestowed upon her, she earned through her gifts with an S. Many gifts. Just the way she interprets the song. The raw purity of her voice. We know at the end it went away. She had some uh, difficulties. And that was sad. And that, that happens to a lot of artists. You get access to a lot of money. A lot of artists have gone through some kind of pain when they were coming up and they self-medicate and sometimes things go a little bit too far. So yeah, we know that Whitney, like many other artists had her, her struggles, but it does nothing to diminish the impact that she had on the music industry, uh, the record industry and the world. Um, I'm sure her worldwide concerts were always sold out. Um, it's a shame that she had to go the way she did, but in fact, Whitney Houston has been gone uh, for some time now, I think seven years. Uh, Robin Crawford, somebody who has always been in Whitney Houston's life, uh, many rumors about whether or not the relationship was more than just a friendship, if it um, evolved into something more physical, uh, was that the reason that she wasn't married all those years? Just rumors. And I think a lot of people in the black community, especially that pay attention to these kind of things, who pay attention to our artists, may have already had an inkling that maybe Whitney and Robin had something more than just a friendship. Well, Robin Crawford has come out and confirmed those suspicions. Um, it's a new memoir called A Song For You, My Life With Whitney Houston. Now, first of all, is it right for Robin Crawford, uh, almost a lifelong friend of Whitney Houston to come out and essentially put Whitney on blast when Whitney's not here to speak for herself? First thing, so it's just a question. Is that cool? I might have some ideas on that, but I'll give you some time to think about it. You can also talk about it in, in, in the comments section. Um, Whitney and Robin met, according to the article I read, uh, in 1980. Shout out to The Root. I was reading The Root. If you're not checking out The Root, it's uh, theroot.com. But that's where I'm reading this article from. The two met in 1980 at an East Orange, New Jersey summer camp when Crawford was 19 and Houston was turning 17 years old. Um, as Whitney Houston's fame grew, they remained tight. Um, Robin was, as they say, ubiquitous in Whitney's life. She was everywhere. Uh, some quotes from, I guess this is quotes from her book, Robin Crawford's book about Whitney. The name of the book is A Song For You, My Life, with Whitney Houston, she says, and I quote, we wanted to be together. And that just meant us. You could take that how you want it. There's not a lot of context there. These are quotes uh, often uh, when you are pushing a book, promoting a book, you kind of look for those, those phrases those quotes that will draw people's attention. And so there's not much context here. Uh, it says, we wanted to be together and that meant just us. Uh, it says, Whitney ended the physical part of their relationship early on, soon after she signed a record deal with Clive Davis at Arista. Watch this part. The singer broke the news by giving Crawford a gift of a slate blue Bible. She, she broke up with her by giving her a Bible. I mean, that's a rough way to go. That's a rough way. I mean, when somebody break up with you, you already kind of piss. Now you got to hold it all in and, you know, get the Holy Ghost. She didn't you a Bible. Her mama, sissy, sissy, they grew up in the church. Whitney broke up with Robin Crawford by handing her a Bible. 
get Jesus in your life. Cause I got I gotta be over in Stockholm, Sweden for this show. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you this Bible. It's I've never I've never forgive me, I've never heard anything like that in my life. <laughs> it's over. Read Leviticus. <laughs> okay, my bad. Uh and she said we couldn't be physical anymore because it would make our journey even more difficult. So now, now what was that? Uh, it says Whitney told me her mother said it wasn't natural for two women to be that close, but we were that close. Is that a dig at the family? Say, listen, y'all too late. We already got on with the get on and Y'all could try to break us up, but we're always going to have that thing that we had and you can't erase that. So the family, and that's predictable more back then, probably, especially right in the eighties that the parents would come along, the mom would come along and say, you know what, this ain't going to be good for your career. If people find out you need to find you a man. And Whitney was linked with quite a few dudes and I'm not going to go down the whole list. I did not research that today, but I remember you know, Randall Cunningham, the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, Eddie Murphy, she messed around with for a minute. Um, but not to get all in her business, stay focused on the Robin Crawford angle here. Is it right that Robin decided to out Whitney? Uh, as I guess you would say bisexual. Um, clearly Whitney did like men. And according to Robin Crawford, she enjoyed the company of at least one woman on an intimate level. I I won't buy the book. Uh, I'm not on Amazon books, having books sent to my house. Uh, what I do read nowadays, a lot of the time it's on the internet. Uh, again, I read my news sites, my hip hop sites. I'm on the root.com to see what's going on. Um, but I'm sure other people will tell me about it. Other news outlets will tell me about it. I'm sure there's going to be a few uh, extended interviews with Robin Crawford where she's going to spill all the beans. Was it wrong for her to put Whitney on blast? Here's my take. It's a double-edged sword. Sword, if I could say that word correctly. It's, it's Robin's story too. Whitney doesn't have exclusive ownership over that story just because she is the famous one, right? Robin was involved in a relationship. It's her story to tell too. Um, Whitney never confirmed the relationship when she was alive. So is that an indication that Whitney never wanted anybody to know? We know Robin didn't say anything the whole time Whitney was still alive. Um, I think she made reference to it. I don't have the quote here, but she, she just wanted to keep it on the low. Um, even after they broke up, she didn't, she never did anything bad to Whitney. She didn't now in today's culture. And that's, I'm not speaking for Robin, but in today's culture, you break up with somebody It's on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever the fuck motherfuckers is using nowadays. Um, people, most people use that as a vehicle to launch their own career, especially if they, if you getting ghosted, you calling somebody, they're not calling you back. And I'm sure Whitney and Robin still had a, a cordial relationship. I wouldn't be surprised if Whitney kept some dough in her pocket. I mean, that's her girl. Um, uh, and Whitney was living a high life. Um, but the whole time Whitney was alive, Robin never said anything. So let's assume that they had that agreement that it wasn't going to come out. So now that Whitney's dead, and I'm sure I haven't seen any interviews with her. I'm pretty sure somebody's going to bring this question up. Why now? Um, is it a money play? I'm not going to accuse her of that from what I, all accounts she is in a relationship with another woman who is financially stable. She seems to be financially stable. So it doesn't seem like a money play to me. It seems like somebody that wants to tell their story. Um, and is it right? Maybe at the end of the day, she made the determination that, you know, people kind of notice anyway. So let me tell the truth about our relationship. And for all I know, um, 
it's a beautiful book. For all I know, it's well written and it pays tribute. And I wouldn't expect anything less from somebody who was in love with Whitney and remained loving her until the day she died. Loved her so much that she would not release that secret. So who knows? Maybe I will buy the book. I, I'm a Whitney Houston f mega fan. And if you just name, you know, I'm your baby tonight. Um, so emotional. I want to dance with somebody. Um, where do broken hearts go? Shit. I mean, I could be here all night naming Whitney, Whitney Houston songs. It's not right, but it's okay. Remember that? I was like, lightweight the comeback junk. Um, Whitney was raw. And this book is, is going to make big headlines, a lot of news. I don't think it will do anything to destroy her legacy. I don't support or not support Robin Crawford telling this story. I don't hate her for doing this. I haven't heard anything from the Houston estate or people that knew Whitney or that was friends with Whitney. Uh, perhaps we will, but at the end of the day, it's still Robin's story to tell. As long as you don't drag the queen, um, and you show respect to pay homage. I'm going to say it's really not a bad thing. Um, but it gives me another reason to talk about the incomparable, illustrious, incredibly mega talented and multi-talented Whitney Houston, AKA Nippy, AKA the voice. In my mind to this day, still the best to ever do it. And you cats on shows like the voice and American idol judges, producers, and contestants stop picking Whitney Houston songs to sing. Okay. So diamond white a few years ago, I think it was on the X factor. You might want to look up diamond white. She did a pretty decent job with some Whitney, with some Whitney joints. Rest of y'all stop it. It's only one Whitney Houston for a reason. And while you had it, quit doing Luther Vandross. It's not a game. Go fuck around with some shit that go do some genuine. Do some Jodas, even though they some bad motherfuckers. Do don't do Luther. Don't do Whitney. Uh, let the queen rest in peace. Hopefully this book will shed a little bit of light on what Whitney was like behind closed doors and not the media frenzy bullshit that we so used to seeing the shit that sells clicks. Uh, and Oh, one more thing. Who did the album? Was that one of the clips dude that did the album cover for uh, Whitney Houston? Her death scene was his album cover. Fuck shit. That was fuck shit. I don't support that. I don't know if he came out and apologized for it. I just came across it today while doing a little bit of research, not the actual picture. Cause that would have really pissed me off. I'll be really going in right now, but it was mentioned in one of the articles. No, it was mentioned in the comment section on the route. Somebody brought the shit up and it brought the shit back to my mind. I hate remembering shit that I don't want to be remembering, but that made me remember that. And hopefully three weeks from now, I won't remember that shit anymore, but I want to say it was Pusha. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But if I'm right, that was some fuck shit. We don't do the queen like that. Uh, again, I I'm about to sign off on this one. I appreciate y'all listening to my rant about Whitney Houston today. Uh, I will be back with more content, broad content, music, politics, current events, what's going on out here in the streets. Yes, ladies, I'm going to do some R and B as well. It's not going to always be the rough down dirty, uh, East coast rap. It's going to be a lot of it, but I got stuff for y'all as well. So let's broaden the platform. Let's, let's grow it together. Like comment, share, subscribe because it helps. And I really do appreciate y'all checking me out today. Um, 
I'm gonna be dropping videos twice a week. I hope you like what you see. If you do, come on back. Keep checking for this channel. And I'm Mike Powers. I'm out of here.